Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're gonna to take a look at Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, the cloud version, and what's going on and how it's operating behind the scenes. Let's dive in. So the first thing that I wanna really just say is if you're coming into Lightroom Cloud from Lightroom Classic, really know that Lightroom Cloud just works. Um, I have been teaching students for years how to fix Lightroom Classic problems. I have tons of videos on this channel on how to fix Lightroom Classic problems, and none of those exist with Cloud. Cloud is built from the ground up to be very user-friendly and really nice to photographers. It just works well. Um, if you're wondering about the differences between the two programs, definitely check out this video up there in the corner that I made on Cloud versus Classic to help you make a good decision. But if you're considering cloud, it really does just work. It's pretty sweet. Now, let's get into why and some problems and some solutions that we can come up with as well. So the first thing we need to understand about cloud is that all of your images are stored on Adobe's servers. And if you access with your computer, you access with your phone, you access with your tablet, all of those devices are gonna be accessing the same set of images living in Adobe's cloud. Now, that means you're paying for cloud storage. It means you have to have internet access, right? There's downside to this, but it also means that if I open my phone and open the Lightroom app, I have access to all 60,000 of my photos that I also have on my computer and on my tablet. The problem is this relies heavily on internet access. Specifically, when we import pictures and we go from our memory card to our computer, those images are gonna take some time to upload to Adobe's servers. And so what Lightroom does is it temporarily stores those images in your internal hard drive in what's called a cache. Now that cache is super crucial because if you're traveling and you're in say Iceland and you're out in the field and you don't have internet access, you might wanna dump a 32 or 64 gigabyte card. Well, those images are gonna live only on your internal hard drive and the memory cards until internet access is restored and the computer is able to push those images to the cloud. So that can present some problems. Um, namely, if you're on a trip and you don't have internet, I recommend keeping your images on the memory cards until that cloud upload has completed. Otherwise, you run the risk of only having the photos on the internal hard drive cache, because they can't upload to the cloud, and if you format your cards, then they're not there. And that's really scary, because if your internal hard drive dies or you lose your laptop, there go your photos. There is a solution to this that we'll talk about in just a minute. Problem number two with this internal hard drive cache is just hard drive space. Many of us buy internal hard drives that are fairly small. Uh, mine personally is 512 gigabytes in size. And if you don't have enough free internal hard drive space, Lightroom's actually gonna tell you that it can't import your photos. Um, if I only have 50 gigs available on my internal hard drive and I try to import a 64 gigabyte card, it's gonna straight up fail and tell me that it's unable to do that. And that's a little scary. Again, you're on a trip, you're trying to use your laptop, you're trying to use Lightroom Cloud, it keeps failing, not a good thing. But again, there's a solution to this one as well. The third and final problem with this internal hard drive cache is that if you don't have internet, you don't have access to all of your photos. This cache really does two things, and we've talked about the first. The first is that if you dump new photos, import new photos, the cache is gonna hold on to those photos until it has internet access to upload them to the cloud. The second thing the cache does though, is it tries to keep local copies of the photos Lightroom thinks you're most likely to want to edit. Examples include if any images with five star ratings or pick flags or recent photos, it's gonna try to hold local copies of the images that you are most likely or it thinks you are most likely to wanna edit without an active internet connection. You can also specify individual albums or Lightroom Classic would call those collections that you want it to keep a local copy of all the time, which is super cool. The problem is if you wanna edit a photo that there's no local copy of, there are some limitations if you don't have an active internet connection. And this really is problem number three, not having access to all of our photos. So with all of that said, what is the solution to these three problems? The real one that I can think of is getting yourself a local copy of all of your photos. Now I wanna preface this with one very important note. This is completely optional. Most people never take this extra step. However, I see a local copy of all your photos as an integral part of using Lightroom. 
Now, if you have a very large internal hard drive, you could make your internal hard drive the local copy of all your photos. But if you have four terabytes of photos, you need at least four terabytes of internal hard drive space to hold on to those and to store a local copy of them. And most people don't have that. So what I recommend for most folks is get yourself an external hard drive. This right here is just a standard Samsung, I believe it's a T7 external SSD, super great external hard drive, very fast. This is two terabytes of storage. And for me, this is my local copy of my photos. So when this is plugged in, my computer has access to a local copy of every single photo I have in Lightroom on Adobe's servers, which eliminates all three of our problems. Problem one of only having the images on the internal and the memory cards, well now the images are gonna be here and the memory cards. And you might say, well that's the same, it's still just one place and on your cards. But the difference is this is super easy to back up using something like Carbon Copy Cloner or Sync Back on a PC videos down in the description on how to use those software programs. But this allows you to then make a copy of it on a trip and you could basically bring this hard drive, a second hard drive and your memory cards and follow my three, two, one rule for backing up even when you don't have active internet. The way this works is your memory cards are going to go to your internal hard drive cache. And then if you have your external hard drive plugged in, those images are gonna get copied or moved from the internal cache over to the main photo drive. And then they're actually gonna upload directly from the main photo drive to Adobe's servers. So it's a very clean process that can cut out the internal storage very, very easily. Now problem number two was not enough storage space. Well, here again, if you have a small internal hard drive that does not have enough storage, having an external like this means you can uh, import hundreds of gigabyte size cards so long as you have the storage space on the external. And then finally, our third kind of downside or bummer of Lightroom was if you don't have internet, you don't have access to edit and see every single one of your photos in every situation. And this solves that as well. With this drive plugged in, you will have instant access to every single image you've ever imported in full resolution, which is really sweet. Now what's cool is this is optional. You don't have to do it, lots of people don't. But this, I think, gives Lightroom superpowers. It gives you the ability to fix all of those main core issues with a cloud-based image editing software by just adding a hard drive into the equation. I wanna interrupt this video real quick to just say thank you to all of you. You may have noticed there's a play button on the back wall here of the video studio, and that's because we hit 100,000 subscribers a couple weeks ago. So a huge thank you to every one of you. Uh, back in 2017, we started uploading videos more consistently to YouTube, uh, and over the last six years, that has really been a big goal to hit 100K. Thank you to every one of you. I do wanna say we have a giveaway planned to give back to the community for hitting this milestone. Uh, definitely keep up to date with the channel because we'll have the details on that coming out in the next few videos. All right, back to Lightroom. Thanks everybody. So to kind of summarize a little bit, we still don't need our main photo drive plugged in to use Lightroom. You can use Lightroom every day, happy day, not use the hard drive at all. Even if you turn on the preference to enable that drive, you still don't have to have it plugged in. However, if it is attached, Lightroom's gonna use that and it's gonna have access to full resolution versions of all of your photos, even without internet. This is gonna make Lightroom run a lot faster. It's also gonna make things like exporting images faster because you can export them directly off the drive. They don't have to download to the local machine and then get exported. Things are just gonna operate at a faster pace. And finally, that drive has more storage space than most of our internal hard drives. So that's gonna allow you to have more headroom for importing large volumes of photos. Now, the big thing I wanna point out here is there's some important messaging in Lightroom that indicates how this process is working. In the upper right-hand corner of Lightroom, we have a cloud icon, and if we click on that, it's gonna give us one of a couple messages. On the left here, we can see the synced and backed up message. This is telling us that all of our photos are synced with Adobe's servers. They are also backed up on our local disk. And this is what we wanna see before we format our memory cards. If you're on a trip and you don't have internet all the time, things are a little sketchy, I'm never gonna format those cards until I see the synced and backed up message. 
if your hard drive's not plugged in, Lightroom will still operate. You're just gonna get a message that says offline originals drive. In this situation, Lightroom's gonna be relying on that local internal hard drive cache, as well as if you have it, internet access to access and edit your photos. Now, one very important note I need to say with this is, what you have on your local storage drive is kept exactly the same as what's on Adobe's servers. If you delete a photo in Lightroom, it is deleted from both the local storage and the cloud. So do beware of that. Secondly, always ensure, like I said, that you see synced and backed up before formatting your cards. That ensures that you always have your images at least two places. Now, additionally, I would actually add in a backup drive that is a backup of this first hard drive and using something like Carbon Copy Cloner or Sync Back to run that backup. So that's all well and good, but how do we get this configured? Well, it's super easy, and you can do this at the beginning before you ever use Lightroom Cloud, or you can even do this after you've been using it for quite a while. Just do beware that if you turn this on after importing thousands and thousands of photos, all of those images are gonna have to download off of the cloud and onto your local disk after changing this preference. The first thing I would recommend doing is formatting your hard drive, and if you're on a PC, also changing the drive letter to something consistent. I've made plenty of videos on this, but I'll leave a couple down in the description on how to do that, but you're gonna wanna make sure you get this drive formatted and set up properly. I also recommend giving it a good name, like Lightroom Drive, Main Photo Drive, whatever you wanna call it, something that tells you what this drive is for. I recommend using this drive only for this purpose and not for anything else to keep things as clean and organized as possible. So now with that external hard drive plugged in, I recommend that you go to Adobe Lightroom Preferences, or if you're on a PC, go to Edit Preferences, and in that preference window, click on the local storage tab. And then down toward the bottom here, you can see mine is already on, but you're gonna wanna turn on store a local copy or a copy of all originals. And then you're gonna click the browse button and browse your way to your main photo drive or whatever you named that hard drive. As soon as you hit choose and you restart Lightroom, Lightroom is gonna start putting all of your images, a local copy on this hard drive. The other thing I might consider changing in here is your cache limit for your local storage cache. Um, you can see right here, we have a cache limit size and I can increase that up even to maximum, which will give it as much space as it can have. If you want your computer to use more of its internal hard drive space for the local cache, again, you don't really need a local cache if you turn on this bottom preference and you bring your external hard drive, but if you don't have your hard drive with you and you have a large internal, you might consider increasing your cache size up to 50 gigabytes or even maximum. I will also reiterate that if you do have a large internal hard drive, you can turn on the store a copy of all originals and set the destination, the location, to a folder on your internal hard drive. That'll tell Lightroom, hey, keep a local copy on my hard drive of every single picture. But again, be sure you have a large enough internal to allow for that, plus whatever you plan on shooting in the future. And that's pretty much the most important preference I would say in all of Lightroom, specifically for those people who are gonna be travel photographers or have internet that is not super consistent. All right, everybody, that's how we do it. If you like this video, definitely hit that like button. If you wanna stay up to date with future videos, click subscribe down there in the corner. Like I said, we will have a giveaway coming down the line for our 100,000 subscriber mark. So thank you to all of you and follow along to learn more on that. Lastly, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I will catch you in a future video. Thanks everybody.